Hello, I'm Wanderer001, and this is my review of the Ecobee Smart Thermostat with voice control, or Ecobee 5, because, well, they kind of got rid of the naming convention uh, with the numbers, so this is the Ecobee 5. There are a few things that differentiate this between the Ecobee 4 and 5, or in this case, just the Ecobee Thermostat. Mainly, one, there is a bigger speaker on the Ecobee 5 than on the Ecobee 4. It also has a faster processor and a glass front screen here. Now, I do apologize for the echo that you may be hearing because, well, the thermostat is where the thermostat is. I also apologize. I cannot show you the actual installation of this as the Ecobee does come with connector so that you can do this yourself. However, my older heating system, I could not for the life of me figure it out. So I had to bring somebody in, uh, in the case of a boiler system, I still, need an I still needed an electrician to do that. And sadly, not being a full-time YouTuber and having a job, I was not around when the thermostats were put in, so I couldn't even film a little B-roll while they were doing it. So behind the Ecobee thermostat here, there is the Ecobee mounting plate. Uh, it has a little level in it and it has a place for all the cables to go into. You also have this face plate here. So in my case, I was replacing this, a regular programmable digital thermostat, which left a bigger hole there, so faceplate was useful. So thanks to that mounting plate that is behind the Ecobee, if the Ecobee updates itself, you know, meaning you want to get a new one, uh, updating from the four to the five, it's really easy. You just pull this off the wall, the mounting plate's there, and you sh should be able to plug in the new one into the mounting plate. Uh, I'm doing this in the winter time, so I actually don't want to take this off because I kind of need it to maintain the heat in the area that I'm in. So the Ecobee itself is 4.2 inches long with a width of 4.2 inches as well. And well, that's because it's pretty much a box. As I mentioned before, the front is a glass panel. Uh, you might be asking yourself, how is it that there are no smudges on this? Well, there is an application that you can use to control the Ecobee Smart Thermostat. I will be breaking that out into its own separate video because I recorded that actually before doing this and it is way too long to have in one big video. So that will be over there. Uh, but I kept the plastic screen on this until right before filming to keep it in this pristine, lovely condition. The Ecobee Thermostat has sensors in it to monitor temperature, humidity, occupancy and proximity. Now proximity, you're just seeing this screen right here, but that's because, well, I'm filming in front of it. So the proximity sensor knows that I'm here. If you were away from the thermostat and you approached it, I'll splash up on the screen, what you could see now, or what you would see, which is the big hold temperature, as well as a outdoor temperature reading. And then as you walk up, you're greeted with this screen. So all of these little sensors in it, help it to be a smarter thermostat. Now, you, like me, may be asking yourself, why go with the Ecobee over the maybe Nest Learning thermostat? Both of them are smart thermostats. Chances are the Nest is probably a little cheaper than the Ecobee. For me and my purposes, I wanted something that was compatible with as many things as possible. Google's Nest Learning thermostat recently closed off a lot of their APIs to third-party developers, which means more of a closed system. I did not want that. For me, that was, I'm, I'm not gonna lie, I was ready to buy a Nest thermostat because one, the Nest used just a two cable system and I could have 99% done that myself, but they closed their system off more. So I went with this one, which required a power line that I was not comfortable doing myself, which is why I had to bring in an electrician. So your Ecobee thermostat is going to be compatible with pretty much anything out there. Gas, oil, electric, dual fuel, uh, heat pumps, it runs the gamut. You can check their website for that kind of stuff. One of the things that differentiates this from a normal programmable thermostat, one, is the ability to access it via the, you know, an application. Again, I will have that review over there in the corner so you can see that, but both the Nest and Ecobee here have sensors. These sensors can go in different rooms in order to monitor the temperature in those rooms. In my case, my bedroom is normally five degrees colder than all the other rooms 
upstairs. And that's because it gets zero sun throughout the day. Having this sensor in there means that overnight, when it would drop even lower, I can have the sensor tell the Ecobee here, hey, use this to set the temperature at the thermostat. And that number right there, if it's reading off of one of these, it will show you that. Uh, it uses this to set the temperature for the upstairs. So yes, if I left it out in my hallway, it would be 66 degrees, but in my bedroom, it would be 64 degrees. I would either have to remember to raise this, those four degrees, or just use this to tell the thermostat, hey, raise the temperature. So that's, that's a really good thing. And these are not terribly difficult to set up. Let me show you what that looks like. This will be adding a sensor to an Ecobee thermostat. So step one is you come into your app and you select new up at the top and you tell it what, and we're gonna say sensor. So we've got either top choice being a smart sensor or a room sensor. Since this is the latest and greatest Ecobee, we got a smart sensor. So here you go, it's telling you kind of what you can do with it. So we're gonna say, let's get started. So in my case, I'm running on Android 10. So it does say, hey, it wants to access information. So we're gonna say allow, because we have to. So what we have to do is there is a tiny QR code on the tag that came with our thing. So there's the tag, and we're just gonna scan that really quick. All right, so we took a picture of it and it wants us to attach it to a specific thermostat. So in this case, this one is actually on my upstairs. So we're gonna say, nope, this is going to attach to the upstairs one. Uh, so we're gonna say, there we go, sensor meet the thermostat. We're gonna take out the little tag here. This little tag is both a QR code, but also the stop for the battery so that it's not sucking power. So we're just gonna do that right now. So little tag gone and there we go. So we're going to give this a moment. Ecobee has found our smart sensor next. So we're going to name our smart sensor. So in this case, this one is actually going to go in my bedroom. Since we don't have other people's bedrooms, we're not going to call it master bedroom or anything like that. We're just going to say bedroom. But if we wanted to, we could give it a custom name, but we're just going to say bedroom, save the name. So comfort settings are what times should this be used over the thermostat? So in this case, we're going to say for sleeping, we want to make sure that the temperature reading is for sleeping. You can always go back and change these. So here it's giving you kind of the best uh, practices. So around four feet on a table or shelf, an open surface away from exterior walls, windows and blah, 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 and away from drafts. So I have an idea where I'm going to put this. It does come with a wall mount as well, but I'm going to try and not use the wall mount right now. Uh, you could say wall mount the sensor and it would give you the instructions for that, but we're not going to say that. So we're just going to hit next. All right, systems are all go. You have successfully added Ecobee. Your sensor may be unavailable for three minutes while it's syncing. So We'll say fine, that's good. We can add another device, or in this case, we're just gonna say done, and I will place this. Now you'll notice that there are two sensors listed for upstairs. So right now it's saying basement is 73, only because I've really been holding the sensor in my hand, but now you should be able to query the sensor and have it used for the smart away and everything. So that is setting up the Ecobee smart sensor. Not terrible at all. And you can have 32 of these per thermostat. Now I have a thermostat upstairs and downstairs and each of them came with one of these. And it has a magnetic base, which just clicks into place right there. It's not terribly large at all. I will say it does come with mounting hardware if you wanted to put this in your wall. I really didn't want to do that, so I used the stand. I will say the stand, its placement is kind of important. I originally had this on my nightstand right next to my bed, which is the furthest point from my heater. Now, I did not abide by the recommended height for this. And what happened is, because of where I had this placed, the temperature reading was four degrees lower than my set temperature. So what actually was happening is, instead of raising the temperature in my bedroom to 66 based on this, it did, 
but it took much longer for this to recognize it because it was lower to the ground and further away uh, from my heat. So it actually raised it four degrees higher than 66. So placement of these is key. Be very cautious with that. Now, it is a fat little sensor here, but that's because of the battery that's inside of it. With this battery, Ecobee says you're gonna get five years of usage out of this. Now, to me, that's, that's ridiculous. And the ability to have 32 of these per thermostat is also great, because there's a, a couple of things which I'll show you once we get into the actual user interface that you can do where it's follow me mode, so it will control the temperature based on the actual rooms you're in. So having a bunch of these uh, could come in very, very handy. So coming back to the thermostat itself, Internally, what you're looking at is a 1.5 gigahertz quad core A35 processor with four gigs of flash memory and, a, and 512 megabytes of RAM. This unit also, in comparison to the Ecobee 4, can use both 2.4 gigahertz and the five gigahertz Wi-Fi band spectrum. Now, for me, I don't really understand why they needed to have a five gigahertz connectivity with this, only because you don't necessarily need it to talk very quickly uh, to the application or the sensors. You just, you need it to be able to talk farther lengths. So you have a choice. At the very least, I do appreciate that they give you those choices. Now, because of that speed, when, when you're jumping through screens here, and we're just gonna you can kind of see how quickly it, it, it's bouncing back and forth. And that's due to the processor that you have in here. And, and coming over here, you could just see that it's just smooth. And we're just gonna put that back at to where we want it while we're doing this. Uh, notice that the eco mode has gone away. That's because I've overridden the eco mode with a preset and then it's set for a specific time. We'll talk about that a little later. One of the other things that the Ecobee 5 here has is Alex A integration. There's a blue light up here at the top and warning, I will be saying the trigger phrase, Alexa. Now it's a little hard to see, but you can see it activated there. We'll try it one more time with the lights off. Alexa, there you go, cancel. With Alex A integration, you can use this as another Echo device. Now, the beauty of this over some of the other Echo options out there, including Ecobee's own smart switch, is that you can use this for more than just Echo commands. You can use this to make Amazon calls. You can use this as a drop-in location. You cannot yet add it as part of a music grouping, but I'm hoping that comes in the future. Just the ability to use this as a drop-in point is beautiful, and I wish that they would have done that with their smart switch. Again, I reviewed that over there, but alas, at least the thermostat can do it. All right, so let us take a look at the actual thermostat itself. We're gonna zoom in a little more so you get a close-up of what we're talking about. So I discussed over here, this is your temperature reading. I will also say that this is just on a one-stage heating setup. This is not gonna show any of the cooling systems because I don't have cooling systems that would work with this thermostat. I have window air conditioners. There's no central air here. But if you look up here, you have the icon which will show you um, what you're currently at. So in this case, it is heat. If that was orange, that means that it is actively heating, meaning the furnace is on. Over here, you've got your temperature adjustment. In the middle there, you have just above the big 66 of this is the temperature it's currently at. This is your humidity. So right now we're looking at 38% humidity. Uh, here you would see either eco mode or in this case the override that I did. We're gonna start over here on the right. This is your Alex A control. So this is where you would set up your Alex A, but you can also click on this to push to talk to Alex A. So you can turn the microphone up top on or off. If you turn it off, there will be a red light that displays for about five minutes and then turns itself off. So then you could still use Echo services. You would just have to come in here and push to talk. But it's, it's like two extra steps 
you would first have to push this and then push to talk. But if you don't want your microphone listening to you, that's how you can do it. You've got your speaker slider right here, which also shows up when you say, if I was to give it a command and it executed the command, the, switch, or the volume control would also be present there. You can also unlink your Alexa services through the application. And again, a lot of these screens that we're gonna be talking about are mirrored in the application. So a reminder that it's over there if you wanna check that out. Next, we're gonna to come to our sprocket. This is to override any scheduling that you may have set up. So I can say, I am home for now, or I am away for now. And again, it's letting you know you can do this via the app. Here is your weather. So again, when you first approach your Ecobee Smart Thermostat, you will see a big picture of the weather, but if you want a more detailed outlook, this is where you can come. So you can see currently it's 39, 0% pollen, 50% humidity, and we're looking at a high of 42 and low of 29, and then it gives you afternoon and then a couple of days, and Monday I'm gonna get some snow, so that should be fun. Next, we're gonna come over here to the hamburger button, and as you can see, because I'm in close proximity of my hand, it's, it's raised the temperature because it's noticed that it's warmer because of the sensors up front. So you've got two microphones right there and then your overall sensor there. There's a proximity sensor, which you may or may not be able to see in the video uh, right there. If you look closely, sometimes you can see a little red light. It's an IR light that kind of shines out to let it know if you're close or not. And then your overall sensors are there. And there it's lowering it because I moved my hand away for a long time. Okay, so hamburger button, we're gonna click on that. This is the heart of your system. Now again, sadly, because I was not around when this was originally set up, some of these I will not be able to talk about, but let's go through this. Up top we have system and we have heat. In our case, we have an HVAC, we can expand that and heat is either on or off. We're gonna leave that on because it's cold today and I'd like to keep the heat on. Eco plus mode, this is something that was added to the Ecobee fives or smart thermostats and we'll slowly be rolling out to some of their older models. Now I will say I wish that some of the explanation that they did in this area, they passed on to the application so it would make a little more sense. So here, if we expand this, we have Eco, Eco Plus on or off. In my case, I do keep it on. Here we have our savings. In the application, this is a slider and doesn't really explain what it actually does. So here you can see selecting your pref uh, preferred Eco Plus settings, you can select minimum, which will adjust your temperature by one degree. Basic, it can adjust your temperature by three degrees. Moderate, five degrees. Enhanced, six. And maximum, it can do up to eight degrees difference of what you actually set your thermostat for. I really wish on the Ecobee app that they would explain that to you instead of just showing a palm tree and save more money, save more money, save more money. Explain to me that you will be adjusting my temperature by a degree. I would like to know that in the application. And we're gonna collapse that. And then we've got Smart Home and Away. We will have that listed as enabled. So what that does is it will utilize the sensors and it will follow me. And if I'm in a particular room and I have it set to be in away mode, it knows I'm there and it goes, okay, you're home. I'm gonna turn the heat on instead of leaving it at a colder temperature. So that's our Eco Plus scenario. Sensors, we're gonna click on that. You have up here at the top, Smart Home and Away. This is another area. Is it on? Is it off? Do you have follow me mode enabled? In my case, I do have follow me mode, so it will use the sensors to determine the best temperature based on the room I am in. And then here you can see the sensors that are included in Smart Home and Away. The thermostat itself does act as a sensor, but you do have that smart sensor that comes with it. And again, you can have up to 32 of those per thermostat. Clicking on our sensor, or in this case, the thermostat sensor, it is participating in home and away. I do not keep it for sleep because like I said, the temperature in my bedroom is four degrees colder than out here in the hallway. So this one only participates, the one in my bedroom, only participates in sleep mode. And then you can change the sensor name. So here you can just kind of scroll through that. You can also delete a sensor. Wouldn't recommend that, especially if you're using it. And going back, you have schedule. So this is one of the things that's uh, you know, nice with a programmable thermostat. The older programmable thermostat that I had in my condo, if you're interested, there is a review over there. It's, it's a decent thermostat, but it would only allow you to have four settings. Home away, home away. 
In this case, you can see I have sleep, home, away, sleep, and this is only a basic schedule that I chose to set up. You can add more just by clicking up there and selecting home, away, or sleep, and then adding another instance of that. So you can have this be really robust, and you can choose individual days. If I wanted to hypothetically copy this to another day, you can say copy Friday and then select the day that you want to do that to. So if you have specific days of the week that are similar, in my case, uh, just the work schedule between my wife and I, never a day is the same, so I don't use that. But you have the ability to do that if you wanted to. And we're going to go back and come down to comfort. Because in comfort, you have home, away, and sleep. Clicking on one of these will allow you to set the comfort the comfort temperature or the comfortable temperature for that. So clicking on 66 will allow me to drag the element up to the preferred temperature for those areas. And then you also see the sensors that are part of that. If you wanted to, you can say bedroom and add that sensor, but we're not going to. And then hit save when you're done. Again, I'm going to cancel. And you would do that away uh, for a waste and, and sleep as well. We're going to scroll up here. Vacation mode. What vacation mode is? We'll hit this plus sign, and it is I depart on this day, I return on this day, and vacation setting, it will set it for 59 degrees. So while I'm away on vacation, even you know if the schedule is set, it will override the schedule because nobody's going to be home and keep it at this lower temperature. You can change the temperature that you want, and uh, you know there's your fan runtime, here's your temperature setting, so you could fix that as you want. So setting the I depart and I return, what that allow it to do is it will automatically go right into that preferred setting and then before you come back, it will know and make sure that it heats up or cools off, in my case heats up, your house to the desired, your normal temperature, your home temperature, before you get back. So that's a nice feature. Reminders and alerts. So I have zero messages, meaning I have zero reminders, I have zero alerts. Uh, what this is, is you can set preferences. So here, I have HVAC maintenance, air handler, UV lamp, low temperature, high temperature, and then humidity. And you can also select display them on the thermostat itself, or in the application, it can show them there as well. Again, these are up to you if you want the Ecobee to send you reminders for things. Myself, not so much. I do maintenance on my, I will be doing maintenance since this is still a new house, uh, on my heating system once a year. All right, settings and preferences. So up here you've got date and time, 12 hour format or time, so 12 hour or 24, and then you can set your specific date and time there. Preferences. So you've got display, Fahrenheit or Celsius, heat range, so here you could set a specific heat range, device name, can change the name based on that, Alex A, sound disabled or enabled. So I keep this off so it's just a doop sound when it's done listening to me. Screen brightness, this is what I probably spent the most time trying to adjust. So standby, since this is in a hallway and I have to walk past this in the middle of the night if I need to use the restroom, I was adjusting the brightness of this screen because it can be kind of bright. So you've got two, you've got standby and then you have active. What we're looking at right now is considered the active screen. So if you check this, what will happen is the screen will go into a sleep mode during when you should be asleep and not staring at your thermostat. I don't leave that on only because sometimes in, in a sleep schedule, I may come out and check. Wi-Fi, you can see, well, I have it connected to what I connect all of my IoT devices to, but in here, you would come in here, and then you can change. You can select your Wi-Fi network, and then you can diagnose if there's problems. So here you've got view log, ping gateway, ping ecobee.com, ping address, and then Wi-Fi. So those are diagnostic style tools that you can use for Wi-Fi. Installation settings, if we come in here, you've got equipment. So you've got wiring. It shows you the wiring as it should be. And it's saying I have a one stage boiler, which means it's either hot or not on. I'm not going to mess with that one, again, because it's in the middle of the winter time and I don't wanna have that problem. Threshold, so if we come in here, you can adjust a lot of stuff. Again, because I am 
in a cold time. I don't want to play with this, but you can come in and configure uh, standing, staging, heat minimum on time. It's five minutes by default. Temperature correction, I currently have it at zero degrees, but you could adjust as necessary. Humidity correction, again, similarly. Thermal protect disabled, but right now, if I come and turn that on, this is a, a protective service, which means I can set it for if a sensor is 10 degrees off of what's in the thermostat, it could be told to ignore that. Uh, installer code, currently disabled. And then test equipment. If you are doing this and it's warm, you won't be able to raise the temperature because I installed this probably in August and well, couldn't test it because in August it's not cold enough to run this. So they use that to test and make sure that everything worked correctly. Coming down, we've got advanced controls, enable security code. So what I consider this is dad mode, uh, preventing anybody from changing any of the settings. Uh, without first enabling a pin, you know, putting in your pin code. So, and then down here you've got reset, which we're not going to be resetting anything. And last is your about, which will show you the firmware and serial number and some other information for the Ecobee. I do wish that they allowed you to manually trigger a firmware update because when they push the Ecobee Plus stuff, I did not get it for three or four days, but I got an email day one. Hey, these new features are here. Well, I didn't have the new features yet and I was a little upset that I didn't get to play with them. So overall, I have been very happy with my choice of getting the Ecobee Smart Thermostat. It's actually one of the things that I, well, one of the first things I wanted to do was get a smart thermostat for my home, but in my condo, it was never large enough to merit me actually doing that. So I'm happy that I have this opportunity to get smart thermostats because it's just another toy to play with. I will say it has not been all sunshines and rainbows and some of it actually happened reasonably early on in the purchasing of the Ecobee. So here's the thing, if you have an Ecobee thermostat, it's just like any other thermostat, meaning the smart thermostat comes from being able to connect to Wi-Fi and the cloud and Ecobee services, which lets you monitor this and do things remotely. Well, thankfully, when this first happened, I did not need heat, but there was a service outage and I immediately you know, thought, oh, it was something with the thermostat. It wasn't something with the thermostat, it was the services. So I found out something very important. One, if the services go down, your Ecobee Smart Thermostat will continue to function as a thermostat. It will not be able to pair with the sensors. So that means it will just take a temperature reading from here. You will not be able to access this remotely, which means you lose access to those extra services that, you know, you've got a smart, thermostat for and three what I seem to have found out is this happened a little more regularly than I thought it did because uh, Twitter was up in arms about this and and that first outage that I got to experience was over 16 hours long so first Twitter post from Ecobee last Twitter post from Ecobee there's a 16 hour difference there so that was that was a little disconcerting at first also I have had two power outages since I've been in my new house and I found that I've got a 50-50 shot whether the Ecobee will reattach itself to the Wi-Fi. And I say that in that the first time I had a power outage, this one automatically connected itself to the Wi-Fi, the one downstairs did not. Second time, this one did not and that one did. And when that happens, you have to come in and manually, because your app will no longer pick it up, so you have to manually re-enter the information to get this reattached to your Wi-Fi. So we covered a lot of information in this. Hopefully you found some portion of this helpful. I know going through the system menus won't be for everybody, but I even use these for myself for reference to go back and check over later. So hopefully there's other people out there like me who will find that helpful. I have been Wanderer001. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them in the area below. And as always, thanks for watching.